What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here and welcome to 2018. It's going to be a very exciting year for smartphones as we're going to be seeing a lot of new trends such as less and less bezels, better audio, better waterproofing, better battery life, better displays and so much more. So I compiled the best smartphones we're going to be seeing this year to talk about in this video. Yes, there are so many to choose from but these I think are going to be the most exciting. So starting off from Samsung, one of the companies that isn't afraid to give you everything you need right now not drag it out for years and years and years. So their latest offering, the Samsung Galaxy S9 is going to be their flagship. It's coming very, very soon in just a couple months, and it will be an evolutionary upgrade. So in other words, Apple's S cycle upgrade, but from Samsung. There's going to be some mild design changes on the back. We're going to see a repositioned camera and sensor orientation. We're going to be seeing a slightly slimmer bezel to display. It'll look a little bit better, but overall, it's going to be design-wise very similar to what's currently out there right now with the Galaxy S8. Most of the changes will be happening on the inside with the new Snapdragon 845 series processor, the Exynos 9810, depending on which area you live in, and overall, it'll just be a little bit sleeker, a little bit cleaner than the older S8. You can also tell by this image that the overall form factor will be a little bit smaller versus the S8, but the battery life will be increasing by 200 milliamps, which will be a welcome change. Also surprisingly, Samsung will be keeping the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack when every other company wants to get rid of it like Apple. So it will keep a lot of faithful customers in line with Samsung. It'll be a very sleek, clean and evolutionary upgrade to the Galaxy S8, but I hope that they make a lot of upgrades to the display such as 3D touch, maybe 120 hertz display and stronger speakers as well. Either way, it's bound to be a success just as every other Samsung Galaxy phone before it. And the rumored launch date is on February 27th at Mobile World Congress. Samsung wants to get this phone out fairly quickly as they want to compete with the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus series, which the Galaxy S8 is falling behind on. And next up, the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. After the triumphant return of the Galaxy Note 8, Samsung is definitely going to want to continue that momentum with the Note 9, the professional focus tablet phone. Now what can we expect from this year's version? So much like the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, the updates will be very minimal. It'll be an S upgrade for the Note series. So the display will be slimmed down just a little bit in the bezels, and this is all according to rumor. Of course, it will contain the Snapdragon 845 series processor, eight gigabytes of RAM will remain. And the exciting thing, according to rumors, is that the Galaxy Note 9 will be Samsung's first smartphone to include an embedded fingerprint reader underneath the display. That's gonna be really monumental and could drive a lot of annoyed iPhone 10 users over to the Galaxy Note series. Okay, and we're back talking about a folding phone from Samsung in 2018. Now, I actually included this in last year's list, but it never came to fruition. However, things are apparently changing this year, where rumors are saying towards the end of 2018, quarter three, we will be seeing Samsung's long-awaited, long-rumored foldable or bending phone. And apparently the naming of this thing will also be competing with the iPhone 10 as it will be called the Samsung Galaxy X. On paper, it'll just look similar to the iPhone 10, I guess. A recent patent filing also from a few days ago suggests that this thing will have a 3D touch pressure sensitive display in order to compete with Apple's version 3D touch. So that'll be a first on a Galaxy phone as well as currently they have it, but not everywhere on the display this would. Now, if we look back in time, Samsung has apparently been working on this phone for over five Five years. The rumor mill has been churning out more and more rumors about this phone. It's crazy how long it has survived without being apparently a cancelled project. So we'll have to see if it's true, but you know, it just seems unlikely that it would happen, but the rumors don't give up on this phone. I really do want to see what comes of it. And of course, my most anticipated product the iPhone 10 series in 2018. Will it be called the iPhone 10 2, the iPhone 11? I really don't know where the naming scheme is going to go, but there will be a new iPhone 10 and alongside it, a larger iPhone 10 Plus. So this one was rumored to happen in 2017, but Apple delayed it as the production issues just for the basic iPhone 10 model were crazy. Anyways, this essentially will be a larger iPhone 10 with a 6.5 inch display instead of the current 5.7 inch. My main gripe coming from an iPhone 8 Plus to the iPhone 10 was that all of your content is scaled down. It appears smaller on the display and this would fix that problem. It would give you a choice between a plus model 10 or just a regular iPhone 10 if you like the smaller comfort size. It's unlikely that there will be any features to differentiate the two as they essentially will be the same product, just a larger version of it. Otherwise, the iPhone 10 2 series 
We'll have Apple's A11 chip. It'll be faster, possibly even a ProMotion display, 120 hertz. That would be great to see. Now, alongside this larger iPhone 10 series, Apple is going to have to do something about the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus series. And this is where maybe an iPhone 9, I'm tentatively calling it, will appear. It'll be a LCD model, but with a cutout very similar to the iPhone 10, or exactly like it, according to Ming-Chi Ko. So he's saying that Apple will replace the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus with a low-end budget series iPhone 6.1 inch with an LCD display. I'm very curious to see how it will be. I mean, it will be slower. Will the display really suck that much more? But the resolution will be a little bit less than the standard iPhone 10 and 10 Plus. And just days ago, another rumor surfaced that alongside those three iPhone models, Apple will be launching another one, a four inch model. What could it be? Of course, the iPhone SE 2. It's been a really long time since the old one was refreshed and it's a very popular product. It's Apple's entry level model. It's also its smallest, very comfortable to use and also very popular with consumers. So Apple will be refreshing this one. It's unlikely it'll receive this display you're looking at. This was just our concept rendition of it, but it would be actually really cool to get this on that phone. It'd be a perfect size for it actually. So realistically, what we're looking at is just a slightly updated version of the current SE. No, there will not be this drastic display change. It will have a faster Apple A10 processor, most likely. It could have a slightly better display, as currently it's using the same one since the iPhone 5S. Uh, just overall, it'll be mostly the same. And this one is also one of my most anticipated Android phones, the OnePlus 6. Now, the OnePlus 5T was a great surprise. With an 18 to 9 aspect ratio display, it definitely caught up to the rest of the smartphone competitors in terms of display, but also surpassed most in terms of speed. The OnePlus 6 will receive the Snapdragon 845, it'll keep its 8GB of monstrous RAM, and it'll be a speed demon. Now the design is mostly slated to be the same, but there is one key feature it might have, an embedded fingerprint sensor within the display according to Gizmo China. In a phone that mostly fell off the radar, the LG G series, we could be seeing a refresh the G7, but it's slated to be called something else as uh, Samsung faced the same problem. It will not be called the G7, instead it might have an 8 or 9 in the name in order to catch up to the current iPhone 8 in the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S9 series. Now, other than that, it's supposed to be faster. This thing still has the Snapdragon 821. It should have a slightly updated, more sleek looking display as this was one of the first phones to go mainstream with the whole bezel-less thing. And it's starting to look old in comparison to the newer ones that came after. So this thing will feature a redesign, Snapdragon 845 processor, a slightly slimmer bezel display according to rumors. And hopefully the actual panel itself will be better as LG currently makes the best TV panels in the world. So this is what the Xiaomi Mi 2 was originally supposed to look like according to early concepts. The actual product was quite disappointing in comparison. The Xiaomi Mi 2 did improve in some ways over the original, but in others was actually a downgrade. So I'm hoping the company goes back to its roots, being known for having the most extreme concept a smartphone available with the highest screen to body ratio ever. And the good news is that is actually what's rumored to happen with the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3. It will have a higher screen to body ratio than any smartphone on the market as well as faster internals to boot. So hopefully this time around it does look a little bit more like its marketing as the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 was quite a disappointment for me. And the Google Pixel 3. According to rumors there will be three models this year as the actual development names have been leaked. The Crosshatch, Albacore and Blue Line series. One of them will be the cheaper low-end model much like the LG 5X was not too long ago, and the other two will be the Google Pixel 3 and Google Pixel 3 XL. What will actually be different is a slightly less bezel design on the larger XL series. Even the regular Pixel 3 will apparently have slightly slimmer bezels, better displays, and the Snapdragon 845 on both. The Pixel 2 was an amazing phone, super fast, so I'm looking forward to the third one. And lastly, as a bonus, I wanted to include Doogee's new concept video they just released of a smartphone they will be releasing later this year, they say, is called the Doogee Slide Screen. It's quite cool because it fixes a lot of the shortcomings with 
all bezel-less display phones, which happen to be the sensors, the earpiece, the camera, where do you put them? And each phone has its own solution. This one actually includes a slide mechanism, which would hide them until you needed them. You'd slide that back portion up and have it available to use. And this way you can get a full screen experience on the front. It actually looks to be like quite a cool concept, but as a result of the sliding mechanism, it does seem that this design is overall a little bit chunkier than your usual smartphone. So we'll have to see, but I cannot wait until they build this. It seems like a very novel concept. Anyways, guys, that is the offering that we're gonna be seeing later in 2018. Of course, not everything is confirmed. It is in the rumor mill stage, but I am very excited to see what 2018 brings. A lot of speed improvements, display improvements, bezels will be shrinking and dying as usual. So I can't wait to see what happens. Guys. Stay tuned, I will be reviewing all of these new products on this channel. And I'm mostly excited for the iPhone the 10 and the overall new lineup from Apple as well as Samsung. So of course, we'll be taking a look at those later this year. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And whichever smartphone you choose, just know it'll be much, much better than last year's. Peace.